So, I went to visit a friend recently, and my friend lives out on a farm, and uh, beautiful farm. And I went uh, as I was pulling in. This is kind of circle driveway, and uh, I'm pulling in, and I'm driving up, and off to my right, I see this pig going along, and this pig has only three legs. I thought, well, what in the hell's going on? What's with a pig with three legs? So I see my buddy, I get out of the car, I say, hey, how are you? Good to see you. We haven't seen each other for a little while, so we, we take a few minutes to catch up. He's bringing me up to speed on all of his stuff. I tell him all of my stuff. And I said, hey, what's the deal with this pig? Why does this pig have only three legs? And he goes, oh, you will not believe this. But you, you, you know that my, my mother-in-law lives with us, right? I said, yeah, yeah, I know. He says, well, my mother-in-law, she can't swim. And, and we, she was down by the creek about three weeks ago, and she was picking flowers, and she slipped into the creek, and she's kind of flailing about, and she can't swim, so she can't get out. Well, the pig, this pig, dives into the water, grabs her by the back of the collar, and pulls her out and saved her life. And I said, well, that's amazing, but I still don't understand why this pig has only three legs. And he says, and then two weeks ago, two weeks ago, my wife was in the kitchen making me an apple pie. You know, oh, I love pies. And apple pie is my absolute favorite. And so um, she's in there making the pie, and I don't know what happened. Maybe the stove was dirty, not sure. But all of a sudden, the pie caught on fire. The stove's filled with smoke. The kitchen filled with smoke. My wife passed out. She asphyxiated. And, and the pig, the pig rushed into the kitchen and grabbed her by the collar and pulled her out and saved her life. And I said, again, amazing, but I still don't understand why does this pig have only three legs? And he said, and then just last weekend, I was in the barn, and I'm working on the tractor. The tractor is up on the moorings. I'm under the tractor, and the tractor slips down off the moorings and pins me on my chest. Well, the pig comes along, and he grabs me by the back of my neck, and he pulls me out and saves my life. And I said, well, again, that's incredible. It's amazing. Why does this pig have only three legs? And he says, well, a pig that's smart. You don't eat them all at once. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Yay, come on. Come on, that's a good joke. Come think about that later. You go, he's a genius. He's a genius. See, Barb, I told you I could do this story. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to our uh, semi-annual open mic. Uh, my name is Tom Hernandez. I am the very proud co-leader of the Right on Joliet group. And our guest of honor have just arrived, so thank you, Ed. Welcome. Uh, we want to welcome especially all of our members and our first-time readers. We've got several folks who are reading for the first time or for the first time in a long time tonight. We especially want to thank our patron, uh, Tammy, and her beautiful young employee, Emma, back there. Hey, Emma, yay! You'll notice that Tammy's out here like the queen. Emma's slaving behind the counter, but that's what you get for being the boss. So that's good. Uh, as you, uh, some of you came in, uh, I gave you uh, purple tickets. To in, in a little bit, we're going to raffle off a copy of each of our four Right On anthologies. For those who do not know, uh, for the last several years, we have, as a group, collected and published a, uh, a collection, uh, an anthology of our assorted writings. Oh, I thought you were coming up to model them. Ah. <laughs> And, uh, and we are very, very proud of this. We, unlike some other writers groups, and some of our friends in the room uh, belong to other organizations and, 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 and have done anthologies as well, and sometimes they do themes, right? And we have not yet done a themed anthology. We prefer instead to kind of just uh, let, ver let everybody participate, give what they think is their very best piece, and that's why we, we call them Right Where We Are, because it shows right where we are on our writing journey. And so we're gonna auction those off in a few minutes as well. And we want to, tonight, uh, 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 we're doing something different. We don't, we have, well, we did horror the last time around as a theme. Tonight we're doing humor, so we're on the letter H. Uh, and we want to welcome our guest of honor, Ed Calkins, who is kind of the reason for tonight's humor theme. Let me invite Denise up here to uh, introduce Ed. Uh, Denise Baron Unlin is our, is our co-founder and fearful leader, and she will bring you up to speed on Mr. Calkins. Fearful is right because I don't like standing in front of microphones. So he's got that. He's got that right. Hold on a second. I have to get my notes for my Ed Calkins address. So almost everybody here, I think, knows me. My name is Denise Baron Unlint, and I am the, the co-leader uh, with Tom Hernandez of Right on Joliet. 
And our guest of honor tonight is somebody that, you know, most of you do not know, but wants to be known. It's his birthday. His name is Ed Calkins, also known as Ed Calkins, also known as the steward of Tara, also known as a ruthless dictator. And you're like, who is this person? Um, before I tell you that, I have to give this to him. So this isn't for you. Yes, yes, I know what this is. But as yeah. a guest of honor, he's giving away a $15 gift card to the book market in uh, Crest Hill that we partner with for an Author of the Month program, and a $10 gift card to Tammy's um, Cafe to whichever presentation he enjoys the most, and it can't be mine. So, And it can't be anything my children read. So, um, And it can't be his wife. So we're narrowing that down. It'll probably be Tammy. And it can be mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so in lieu of a reading, I'm going to explain who he is and why I wanted to do this in his honor on his birthday. Um, for anybody who knows us, years ago our family used to deliver thousands of newspapers in the middle of the night. And when um, the distribution changed from under the Herald News to the Tribune, um, Ed was one of my supervisors. And he was not a usual supervisor. His section, he called it his kingdom, and then he was a ruthless dictator. And if he didn't, if you did something that displeased you, he would um, make up a limerick to put you in your place. Who is this guy? He had nicknames for a lot of the carriers. Um, I don't remember what Stan's was. Poor Audrey Bop would come in, and you would know when Audrey Bop came in, because it would be, oh, hell! at 2 a.m. Um, a fellow who worked underneath him was his prime minister of his country, and yes, I had a nickname too. It was Goddess. And the reason why my nickname is Goddess is because my family took out the most papers of any two carriers, and I took out just under a thousand by myself every day. Well, not quite by myself. I had help from children. And so he called me Paper Goddess, which was eventually shortened to Goddess. And he would bring me my route changes every day on his knees and would not stand up until I gave him permission. <laughs> if you think he's crazy, and his alter ego, he says, is absolutely insane, he also had a really big heart. And he said, you know, one of the things that you do when you're having to do this job seven days a week in the middle of the night, he would do things to make it fun, which was part of some of these things. Um, for Memorial Day, he would have pallet jack races, and he would bring in a grill on the 4th of July and cook steaks that he bought. And at Christmas, um, he would send like little helpers around to get nominations for the Queen of Christmas. He didn't explain what this was. I didn't, I think I got a couple nominations. I didn't win. And then he would send these same elves around to talk to all the carriers, anybody with children 12 and under, Ed and his wife, would buy presents for them. Every day when you would get your, your changes in December, you would get candy canes. I don't like candy canes except in December, and, and throwing papers after he left was never the same without an Ed Calkins candy cane. I didn't know Ed was creative in a literary fashion or liked to write until one year when a features, my, my features editor at the time, handed me a news release where she had read there's a study that a smile has an effect of a year. So if I smile at you and that makes you smile and you smile at the next person, some people smarter than me track that and found out that smile went a whole year. So she said, I want you to write a story on three people who brighten people's lives. And I asked my kids for some suggestions. I thought of one other carrier who was very upbeat, Hugh. I didn't think of you. And I asked them for other suggestions, and Rebecca had one, and it was Timothy who suggested Ed. So I wrote a story on all these things, and then like, that was <laughs> when the story came out, Ed came up to me and said, wow, I know a real writer. And I'm like, who? Who? Because this was just what I did to, to pay my mortgage, you know, writing for the paper. And that's when I learned that he wrote fiction, and he was... He, I didn't, I didn't know, and at the time I was working on my first novel, and the fact that he validated me as a writer, it wasn't something that I thought that I was doing, and I was struggling on my first novel, wasn't even sure I was going to finish it, 
And so they gave me a lot of encouragement. A couple months later, I missed his birthday. What he would do for his birthday, he seems to feel this day should be a national holiday. Um, and since I own his identity, and we'll get to that in a minute, I feel I should at least be doing my part to make sure people know him. So he feels today should be a national holiday because it comes in between President's Day and Valentine's Day. And it should be celebrated with a parade because he's ruthless and because it's his birthday. And, and so what he would do is he would have Prime Minister Dan pull him around on a pallet jack around the center while he'd throw candy at everybody. And that was the parade. It was all of three minutes long, missed it every year. So while I was working on this novel, having missed yet another parade, I came into the center and I put an old used red Christmas bow, it was all smashed, on his sweater and said, okay. He had been trying to get me to write a newsletter for his kingdom, like I needed another project. And I said, okay, for your birthday I'll do that, or I'll make you a vampire in my novel. And he said, well, immortality, of course. So he became the world's first Irish vampire, and we did it legally, so I owned his identity. If I could find the paperwork to prove it, but we had an attorney draw it up. And I remember the attorney at the time calling me up and says, he doesn't want anything. I said, no. He said, there's no restrictions on the use of his, of his name or his person. Nope. Got whatever. Totally do what I want to do. He says, this guy's some kind of a nut. And I said, no. I said, he just wants to be known. That's all. He just wants to be known. I think, you know, maybe all of us want some of that too. So, so that was it, and he became the world's first Irish vampire. We did some book signings at the distribution center. For our release, he came on out in a borrowed kilt from JJC. And one thing I learned about him while doing this is that he didn't write anymore, because he said he, he had lost a novel um, when his computer crashed, and writing was very hard for him. He's very dyslexic. He said spell check doesn't recognize him. He would try to run it through spell check, and the spelling was so bad, he would just make it worse. So I asked him to blog on my blog that I started because authors are supposed to have blogs. I told him Saturday was going to be dedicated to all things Irish, and, and he's been intermittently sending me posts for my blog ever since 2010. In 2012, he cut off communication with me. He sent me an email saying that he's going through some things and he'll reach back out when things are better. And so I kept running old blogs and every year we miss Calkins Day here. My series has a built-in holiday and we kept forgetting it. In 2017, we had our first parade, my daughter and I. We walked a candy bowl up to the Herald News and took videos of that. The next summer I called him and I said, you know, I'm all for giving a dude his space, but it's been five years. And he said, nothing's changed. Life is still hard. Um, but he was so encouraged that I had reached out, couldn't believe I was still running his old blogs, that he started sending me new material. And I'm wrapping this up. In 2008, I took a series of his blog that he'd written about my Irish genealogy, I'm not Irish. I published it to him, unbeknownst to him, and this writer's group, we had a book signing here. It was the first time I'd seen him in five or six years. He came out figuring we were just gonna sit and chat, maybe one or two people would show up. He said, maybe I'll make 17 cents in royalties. My writer's group supported him, so I cut him a royalty check for $80.18 that night. And I have sold um, a book online recently, I owe you a quarter. And Last year we had a limerick slam that was sparsely attended, but those who were here had so much fun to the point that Dee kept hitting up venues for six months trying to get another one going and started writing letters to the editor of the Herald News in limerick verse. So Calkins Day for me, and I feel it should be a holiday, if anything to celebrate things that are lighthearted and imaginative and creative, and I'm going to leave you with just a few quotes that Ed really said, that made it all in my book, except for the last one, which was in a Q&A I posted on my blog. Have you stopped to consider what's fair to me? Do you know what it's like to have stories bursting inside you only to hand deliver, since I was a lad, newspapers full of other people's stories and not be able to put the right words down on paper? I'm so dyslexic and scatterbrained, even spell check doesn't recognize my words. This is not about Ed Calkins the man, but Ed Calkins the myth, and I can't worry about all these details. 
You only verbally have to agree to join my harem. This way I make wives left and right. Yeah, he has a verbal harem. As an Irishman, it's my right to create myth. That way, you don't bother about the facts, only what you imagine happened. And by the way, for somebody who didn't want to write and resisted a blog, one of my fans said I should write his backstory, and I said only Ed can do it. He is working on a novel. I've seen some chapters. It's hilarious, and it is, you know, Tom Hernandez always says our group is to nurture the writer and we honor the effort. I think that's exactly what we're doing. I feel like that's, you're an honorary, if I'm an honorary Irishman, you're an honorary right on Joliet member. <laughs> Last quote, it's true that I'm a ham, but I also believe that good cheer is contagious, and I hope we catch a lot of it tonight. Welcome, Ed. And since wow. it's your birthday, what do you say we just take a quick second? Key of C? Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ed. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right.